when you were um, working at uh, Man City with Pep, what did you learn about the psychology there is to being at the top mm. and maintaining those levels? What, what did you learn? A lot. Uh, obviously, the standards that they are set at that club, um, they are not only to win, it's to win in sets and way to win every three days. And, um, and being extremely demanding and critical and at the same time supportive. So it's a good mixture. Um, it was incredible to be part of, of that team and that evolution and how that team was built and that thing and I will always be very grateful. And obviously now that you're rivals rather than, than colleagues, I understand you, do you not do you not really speak to Pep about football anymore? And how, how often do you speak to him still? And do you yeah. have to sort of forget do you have I, to forget it now? I no can't problem. speak. Obviously we're not gonna be talking about things that are related to our teams, but of course we we can speak about football and any other matter that's not going to change. And I just wondered because you're talking about demands on the players, but it's demanding on all the staff, including you. I mean, yeah. I, you're, you may tell me different that you've, you're, you're not the same weight you were when you played football. But how do you look up? How do you look after yourself in a in a period where you're travelling every three days? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You're doing yoga. How do you keep yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I try to sleep um, well. I think rest is really important. Uh, I look after my diet when I can. I don't exercise as much as I should have done, and I, I have to be very critical with myself on, on that sense. And then I have to try to keep a clear mind and to do that. Um, yeah, spending time with my loved one is something that it really helps me, my wife, my children, and and then yeah, reading, thinking, to meditation sometimes. Um, I think sometimes that helps you. Mikael, it's clear that you have a really good relationship with the executive team here. Uh, how important is that? I mean, uh, in the documentary, speaking with Tim, it was interesting how he says that sometimes he has to challenge you because he's older, more experienced. How important has that relationship been? Well, I'm really proud and happy with, with the team that we have built together, starting with ownership, um, with Stan and George, and then that communication chain, how it works, how clear the roles are, uh, but at the same time, how intact is that ambition to bring this club um, where it belongs and and there I think everybody's contributing the way Edu is doing his job brilliantly Rich has been a great addition Vinay continues to do a lot of things with the experience I had the club team it has had other values um, and other presence at the club that is really important um, he knows ownership really well and uh, that facilitates a lot um, I think everybody's been really really important it seems like there's trust between all of you, so mm. if in January you, you're in this position and you, you said to them, look, can we, we just need one more player or this, mm. you think they would say, the trust is there, say, yeah, we, we'll go with you, Mikel, because we've seen what you've done. I think that trust is, um, I think it's been shown in many ways. In difficult moments, that they have shown um, trust and, and understanding of the situation we're in and, and a lot of clarity on how we're going to get out of it and, and move to a different phase in the project. And yeah, when they had to invest, buy players, um, get players out as well, they've been extremely um, loyal and extremely trustful, I think. So if you went to them, do you think, if you said we really need this, do you think they would say yes? I think they would try to do their best, yeah.